Hello and welcome to another JavaScript Algorithms and Data Structures project tutorial. Today we are going to go over the Cache Register project. So this is probably the toughest project out of all the project five projects that you need to complete at this time that I am making this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So if we look in the instructions, uh, it says design a cache register register uh, function that is going to accept um, you know a few arguments and but basically what we're doing is we are writing code for a cache register so if you are let's say you're going through Walmart and uh, we, you give you're paying for an item and it's 19.99 and you give a $20 bill to the cashier we are writing the function that their register has that says, okay, they gave us a $20 bill. Now what change do we need to give back to them? So we are solving that issue here, right? So a few things we're going to do is we're going to keep track of what change we have. We're going to keep track of uh, what change we're giving back to them and among a few other things. So another few things to keep in mind is what we need to return. So if we look at this line right here, it says to return insufficient funds if we cannot give them exact change, right? So if we're one penny off, we return insufficient funds. Another thing we'll do is we are going to return closed if we do not have any more money in our till. All right. And then we are, we, then we will return open if we still have money in our till and yeah, and we can go on to the next order. So, uh, also another thing is the CID means cash and drawer. And all that is, is a simple 2d array. Uh, for example, if you look at the, the, the code editor, over here, I have a bills uh, array. And this is exactly how the cash and drawer, uh, drawer array will look like. Another example of this is if we go down to the test cases and we look at, say, this line of code, you'll see what kind of input we're getting. We're going to get an array of arrays, and each of those small arrays is going to have a, a name. So a penny and then value. So that, that, so again, we are going to take in. So if you, if we look down at the code ed editor at the cash check cash register function, we're going to take in a price, a cash and a cash in drawer. All right. Now again, and also another thing worth mentioning before we start is if you do not live in the United States, this is the value of all these currencies right here. All right. And also before we start up here, this bills array that I declared, this is all the value of all these bills is in pennies. The re the reason I did that is because when I originally started this uh, project, the issue I ran into was rounding errors. When I would subtract say 0.25 from 0.1, for whatever reason, sometimes JavaScript gives you this really long number. For example, 0.25 minus 0.1, you would expect to be 0.24, but JavaScript might say, oh, 0.24, oh, 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 one, for whatever reason. Now I was just running into lots of issues, so I just changed that to pennies to avoid those rounding errors. And then once I return uh, the change array, then I go and change that back. All right, so let's get started. Now in the check cash register function, let's look at these variables I declare up here. So I have a variable called require change, and that is a change we are required to give back to the client. So again, if you're wondering what this times 100 is, it goes back to, to the point where I'm making everything in pennies to avoid those rounding errors. So if you give me $20 in cash, that is 
thousand pennies because twenty dollars times one hundred, because there's a hundred pennies in a dollar is two thousand pennies. All right. So this required change is a change I need to give back to you. If you give me a twenty dollar bill for the price of an item that's nineteen ninety nine, then I owe you one penny. That's all that says right there. All right. Then I have another variable called my cash. And you don't need to have this variable in your solution, but I have it in my solution. And the reason I do is because it makes my code more readable. Um, so all, all this is doing, this cache in drawer to object, is I'm saying, hey, you know, this input we're getting right here is kind of inconvenient because if I need to say, uh, how many quarters do I have? I have to then go and say, okay, what at what index is my quarter array at versus if i have an object i can say my cash dot quarter so it's easier to read and easier to write and that's the purpose of converting that to an object and that's just for usability you totally don't have to do that here's a simple function that does that and i'm not going to talk about the all how this works in here basically it makes an array like so change into an object like so that's all it does all right i have another object called client cache and this is exactly like my cache except it's an object and the reason we need that is because remember in our instructions we need to return this change here and again just like with my cache once we end the transaction, I'm going to convert that object back into an array, back into what is expected for the output. And then I also have a variable called i, and that just represents index, and you'll understand why I have that later. So the first thing I do is I say, if you give me exact change, just, you know, we're, we're all done, um, is what what this little if statement does and it's really simple uh, if you have a purchase for 19.99 and you give me 19.99 there's nothing that else this function needs to do we're all done we're going to close close this transaction and give you the change which is just what the input is now this section of code right here uh, there are a few parts to it but basically what we're doing is we're giving out those bills from big to, big to small we're going to use this bills array up here to have a reference to our values so we are going to say we're going to try to give you the biggest bill we have to the smallest bill so if you have a purchase for uh, one dollar and you give me a hundred dollars plus one dollar then I owe you a hundred dollars and so and I'm not gonna say oh here's you know what would that be ten thousand pennies <laughs> I'm going to give you the big bills first okay so that's the purpose of this function now let's go through it so this I variable all that means is index that keeps track of the index on this bills array that we're at. So if we're at index zero, we're at that. If we look back in the instructions, index zero, we're at that $100, one twenty dollars and so on and so forth. So what we're doing in this loop is we're going through each type of bill and we're saying, can we give you a hundred dollar bill? If so, or all we're saying is, can we give you a hundred dollar bill? Can we give you a $20 bill? And we're going to keep going through until either we ran through all our types of bills or um, we're done giving you change. For example, if you just had $1 change, there's no need to go through the rest of the types because there's no more change to give you. All right. So we have a bill now, right? And... We're going to, and I have two little variables called bill name and bill value. You don't need them. Again, this is one of those things where I make a variable so it's easier to read. 
versus actually needing to do it. All right, so we have a bill, say $100, say we're in the first index, right? This I here represents our index. So we have $100, that's our bill name, $100, and our bill value is this bill value right here, so that's 10,000, and that represents 10,000 pennies. Now I'm going to say, in this if statement, I have a little function that says I have change. And the big challenge with this project is your, the change in your drawer is not infinite. You have a finite amount of change, and so you have to make sure you're able to give them the change before you just say in the program, okay, just give them $100. If you were a cashier, you wouldn't want your machine to say, oh, give them $100, and then you open up your till, you don't have $100 to give them. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this I have change function. So I'm passing in bill value, I'm passing in the amount of cash that I have in my till, and I am passing in the required change I have left to give the client. All right, so let's look at I have change. So this is a simple, relatively simple statement. This right here, I'm saying, okay, if my bill change is greater than or equal to the bill value. So if, let's say I want to try to give them $100, right? If I have $100 or more is what I'm saying. So I'm saying in the case that I'm trying to give them $100, if I have $100 or more and the change that I wanted to give them back minus this $100 is greater than or equal to zero, then I have change. All right, and th this next part doesn't necessarily make sense with I have change, but what it does do is it says, okay, if I need to give them $5 back, I'm not gonna give them a $100 bill. You know, We can't give them extra money. We can't give away our money. All right. So if I have change, another thing, when I'm the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set our client cash to zero right here. And the reason I do that is because in this line of code, I modify the client cash dot bill name value, right? So for $100, I modify client cash dot 100 or $100, right? And because I modify that using the plus equal operator, I need to set that value to zero right here. All right, so I'm saying, okay, if I have change, then while I still have change, you know, I can give out as much change as possible of that given bill. So while I have change, we're gonna say, okay, we're going to add to that client cash. We're going to say, okay, we're going to give you our bill value. And we're also going to divide it by 100 because remember, everything's in pennies in order, order to avoid those rounding errors. So we are going to add bill value divided by 100 to convert it back to its original value. And that represents us giving them the cash, and then on this line of code represents us subtracting that cash. And I use the parse int function here to uh, avoid those rounding errors again. I think I had an issue here, like I was saying earlier, where I would subtract two numbers and it would give me a float instead of an integer. So this parse int function ensures that I, I will get an integer. And then the last thing I do is subtract that required change. All right. I think that was explained fairly thoroughly. And of course, at the end of this first while loop, I'm adding, I'm incrementing I, otherwise we'd be stuck in this loop for eternity. All right. 
Now the final thing we need to do is return an object. And there are a there are a fair amount of returns we can have. We can have three different statuses. We can have closed, open, or insufficient funds. So let's look at this first if statement. So if required change equals zero, and what that represents is that means, okay, we gave them all the change back. We don't have any more change to give them. That means we had a successful, that means this, this loop was successful and we gave them all the change that they needed. If that is the case, and we're going to ignore this right now. If that is the case, and we have we still have money left in the drawer, then we're going to return the status open. And we're going to return our change. And in the beginning, I said that I needed to convert that object back into an array. That's what I do right here. I use object.keys to get the key values of my client client cache object, which returns an array that I map through. And then for each key, I'm going to create a new array with a key and then that value. So what I'm doing is I'm creating this output array right here. If you look in the instructions section. So that's all I'm doing there to return that. Now let's take a look at this. I have no bills function. And I created this name, or this, this function is name is pretty straightforward. It returns true if you have no more bills in your till. That's all it does. And again, we use object.keys and we map through my cache. And then all I'm doing is I'm saying if any value in my cache, my cache is greater than zero, then I do have change. And we're going to return the opposite of that because we're checking if we have no bills, not if we do have bills. All right. So if we gave them all the change necessary and we don't have any money left, we're going to close this till. We can't accept any more customers. Sorry, people, you have to go through a different line. So this is assuming we had success giving them all the required change. But if we did not have success giving them the required change, so if required change is not equal to zero and say we still owe them a dollar, then what we are going to do is we're going to return insufficient funds. So in that case, we're saying, hey, I owe you $5. Sorry, I don't have that money in my till. And these are all the cases that we have. So now if we click run the tests, we will have a successful completion of this project. I will put the solution to this project in the description so you can look at the source code. I do recommend that you try solving it on your own before you use the source code. If you like this tutorial, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And thank you for watching. I'm Alex Emma, and I'm out.